On February the 15th, 1984, an American film distribution and production label formed. This company would be called Touchstone Films, later Touchstone Pictures. Touchstone has become famous in the film industry, the television industry, the home video industry, and within the logo community because of their memorable logos. As the years went on, they became a ubiquitous name, and they have produced and distributed many classics. But, in recent years, production has slowed down, and Touchstone, like all the greats, disappeared too soon. Their most recent film was released in 2016. But why? Why hasn't Touchstone made a film in recent years? Well, this is what this documentary is about. To celebrate 35 years of this amazing company, I present to you What Happened to Touchstone. During the late 70s and the early 80s, Walt Disney Productions started to make films that would receive the PG rating by the Motion Picture Association of America, or MPAA for short. The Black Hole, released in 1979, was the first Disney film to receive the PG rating. The film was relatively successful in the box office, grossing $35.8 million with a $26 million budget, but it received mixed reviews from critics. The film has a 43% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Over the next few years, Disney experimented with more PG-rated content, like the 1981 film Condor Map. This film received a 25% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but it has gained a cult following amongst Disney fans. Other PG-rated films from Disney around the 1980s were The Watcher in the Woods, which did terribly in the box office, Night Crossing, which was actually alright, receiving a 6.5 out of 10 score on IMDb, and Tron, which was well received by critics, getting a 71% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. There was also Never Cry Wolf, released in 1983. This film was insanely successful, receiving a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The film was rated PG despite it including male nudity, but it did well at the box office. Never Cry Wolf has been credited as being responsible for the establishment of Touchstone, forming four months after the film was first released. Since Disney was now experimenting with PG films for the more mature audiences, the then Disney CEO Ron W. Miller formed Touchstone Films on February 15th, 1984, as a label for their PG films. Was this move successful? Yes, indeed. Touchstone's first film was called Splash, released on March the 9th, 1984. It had a budget of only $8 million, but received $69.8 million at the box office. It has a 90% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It received a PG rating for including some profanity and brief nudity. The whole point of Touchstone was to make films that would be unsuitable to be released by Disney, and Splash proved this very well. Splash was not the only film from Touchstone from the 80s that would be a success. Down and Out in Beverly Hills, released on January the 31st, 1986, received $62.1 million in the box office, having a $14 million budget. It has an 81% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. This film had the distinction of being the first film that involved Disney to receive an R rating by the MPAA. Eventually, Touchstone started releasing films that would receive a PG-13 rating and an R rating by the MPAA. Some include Ruthless People in 86, Outrageous Fortune in 87, and Tin Men in 87. Ruthless People had a $9 million budget but received $71.6 million at the box office and it holds a Rotten Tomatoes score of 94%. Outrageous Fortune was successful in the box office, but received mixed reviews. Ten Men only received $25.4 million in the box office with an $11 million budget, but it received positive reviews from critics, and currently has an 81% rating on our favourite website that I've already mentioned too many times, Rotten Tomatoes. The name changed to Touchstone Pictures in 1996 after the release of Ruthless People. In 1988, Touchstone became a whole unit of Walt Disney Pictures. A film that was incredibly successful from Touchstone was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It had a budget of $50.6 million and received a whopping $329.8 million in the box office worldwide. But it had received some controversy due to a scene supposedly featuring brief nudity with the laser disc release, as well as some legal issues. Nevertheless, it remains the fifth highest grossing film from Touchstone. Dead Per Society, released in 1989, collected $235.9 million in the box office, becoming the 15th highest grossing film from Touchstone. Of course, not every Touchstone release was good. Ernest Saves Christmas, released in 1988, only inherited $28.2 million in the box office, with a budget of $6 million. The film has a 38% rating. Regardless, the 1980s was a very successful decade for the company, but the beginning of the 1990s proved to be less victorious. 
One of the most notable flops was Where the Heart Is. It had a budget of $15 million, but it only received, wait for it, 1.1 million in the box office. It has an 11% rating. Things started to get better with the launch of Pretty Woman. This film had a budget of $14 million and earned an amazing $463.4 million in the box office and received a 62% rating. On October the 23rd, 1990, Disney launched Touchwood Pacific Partners. It was a partnership with Disney, Touchstone and Hollywood Pictures, another subsidiary of Disney. This acted as the funding source for films for Disney, Touchstone and Hollywood Pictures. Speaking of Hollywood Pictures, I need to say that this company was less successful than Touchstone was. It closed in April 2007 because most of their films were poorly produced. There were a few good ones like The Sixth Sense in 1999, which made $672.8 million in the box office. Things for Touchstone were fine and calm until the 2000s arrived. In 2003, Walt Disney Productions created Pirates of the Caribbean The Curse of the Black Pearl. This film had a large budget of $140 million, but was able to collect $654.3 million in the box office. The film was extremely triumphant for Disney, and so sequels were made. Another part of the Caribbean film is currently in production. This film received a PG-13 rating by the MPAA. This led to Disney realising that they didn't necessarily need to have other divisions in order to make PG-13 films. In 2006, Disney limited Touchstone's output to two to three films a year in favour of Walt Disney Pictures titles due to an increase in film industry costs. As such, Touchstone only made two films in 2007, three films in 2008, and three in 2009. This continued through the 2010s. In 2007, Touchstone Television was renamed to ABC Television, later renamed to ABC Studios. The Buena Vista brand was eliminated the same year. Touchstone's films around this time were still relatively successful in the box office and with critics and casual audiences. Wild Hogs, released in 2007, made $253.6 million in the box office, so despite the new limitations, Touchstone was still going strong. Then, the year that broke Touchstone arrived. In 2009, Touchstone started to serve as the distribution label for DreamWorks. This meant that Touchstone started to distribute more films than produce them. Disney started to fund DreamWorks $90 million as long as DreamWorks didn't get additional funding. This made it look like Disney was controlling DreamWorks, but also switching to DreamWorks' side. DreamWorks' films around this time, at best, were a modest success, and Touchstone started to fall. In 2012, Disney reportedly was in an early stage in considering Touchstone's fate, including a possible sale. In other words, Touchstone was close to entering dormancy. Luckily, Jerry Bruckheimer, the founder of the popular Jerry Bruckheimer Films Company, was interested in helping Touchstone. He essentially wanted to buy Touchstone and revive them in a way that Disney didn't. But Disney decided to not renew their deal with Bruckheimer, and they were uninterested in Jerry's revitalization of Touchstone. I personally think that Touchstone should have gone to Jerry Bruckheimer's hands. It would have revived the company in a way. The reason why Disney refused Jerry's offer is because Alan Horn, Disney's current studio chairman, admitted that Touchstone's output had been reduced to only distributing DreamWorks' films, as those films were in the label's wheelhouse, whatever he means by that. In addition, Touchstone started producing films that weren't Disney-related, including Nomeo and Juliet, which was okay, The Wind Rises, which was very successful, and Strange Magic, which was awful. The original agreement that DreamWorks wanted was that Disney and Touchstone would distribute 30 pictures. By the end of it, Disney distributed 14 of them, and Touchstone distributed 13 of them. The last film under this agreement was The Light Between Oceans, released first on September the 1st, 2016. It had a budget of $20 million, and the box office scored $26 million. The film received mixed reviews. Universal Studios, yes, even they have to turn up at one point, replaced Disney as DreamWorks' as distributor. So now every new and future film from DreamWorks will be distributed by Universal. Disney retained the distribution rights to these DreamWorks films. Finally, on December the 20th, 2017, Disney pulled the plug, and Touchstone went dormant, and they stayed dormant since. So, what happened to Touchstone? It was successful during its early years, replaced during the mid-2000s, slowly became insignificant to Disney, and eventually went dormant. Even though I love Touchstone, I can see why Disney ended them. Disney is fully capable of producing films that will receive a PG and a PG-13 rating by the MPAA, but surely if they realised that now, they should have just sold the company to Jerry Bruckheimer, he would have kept Touchstone alive. 
Disney knew it was bad to keep them alive, but they refused to sell it despite them saying that Touchstone's fate was coming. Well done there, Disney. Well done. Anyway, despite Touchstone's current state, I still love Touchstone because they have produced some classic movies. I just wish Disney did something to keep them alive. Well, happy 30th birthday, Touchstone. You deserve it. Thank you all very much for watching this documentary. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.